Hello, my name is Ed Gonzalez. Today, I'd like to demonstrate two custom controls I created that bring advanced geomapping functionality into Cognos Analytics interactive reports. I do this by tapping into the power of the Mapbox API. Of course, Mapbox is already integrated into Cognos Analytics. However, the use of it is still limited to simple dashboard components, and it has not yet found its way into report development. The key phrase there is not yet. IBM has been improving and adding functionality with each subsequent release of Cognos Analytics. However, in the meantime, we can use custom controls to tap into the power of the Mapbox API. The simplest way to do this is to review examples of Mapbox API JavaScript code, and there are plenty of examples on the Mapbox website. Then copy and refactor the code into the format expected by Cognos. And you can find that expected format by reviewing sample JavaScript code shipped with Cognos Analytics. Then finally, use a custom control to integrate it into our interactive reports. Now, this may sound like a slight oversimplification of the process, but at its core, it is basically the approach I used when creating the examples I'm about to demonstrate. Now, to become more familiar with custom controls, I would highly recommend checking out the IBM Analytics Communities online. This is a link to a pretty good introduction of custom controls and JavaScript and interactive reports. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into a demo. So here we are in Cognos Analytics. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up a template that I had already started. I started a report that I have in my content and I named it template one. And when I open it and we run it, we can see that I get a very basic report, nice and simple here. Uh, and the data that I'm using comes from the Go Sales, uh, the Go Sales sample database that comes shipped with, uh, with Cognos Analytics. And the data in the list is basically a filtered down list of all of the retailers that are in the United States along with the latitude and longitude for each of the retailers. And that latitude and longitude is what the Mapbox API is going to use to plot them out onto the map. So this first example I have is simply, simply taking that latitude and longitude and putting dots on the map. So let's go ahead and jump right into uh, page design here so we can add our controls. So from the toolbox, we go to advanced and we take our custom control you drop it right onto the report. We're going to leave that highlighted there so we can view its properties. Um, so the properties are fairly simple. We have a description, with, which is optional. We have the UI type. Now we have three different UI types. I'm going to go ahead and leave it with the, with the default, which is UI without event propagation. And then the module path. Now this is very important. This is actually the path to the JavaScript that we created using the Mapbox API samples. So on my server, I have this located on the local host. So this would be HTTP local host. And I have it in the folder called controls. Now, of course, this is going to be different uh, on your server. Uh, one thing that is fairly common is to put these controls in the install directory of Cognos underneath web content. So this is basically their path to our JavaScript file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK there. And then just for uh, formatting purposes, I'm going to go ahead and set the height and width of this control. I'm going to go ahead and set uh, the height to 700. And I'm going to set our width to 1250. Let's make this uh, nice and big here. There. So now we have our property set. The only property that I didn't mention was configuration. Now, when, when you create these custom controls, you can allow your code to accept some variables so that a user or power user can set them at the report level. And some of the examples there would be some colors, maybe a password, maybe a key for your API. Uh, but for now, in my examples here, I don't use any of that configuration. So back to the custom control itself. We have our property set, and now we want to access some of the data. And we do this by clicking on the plus sign, and we get the Add Data Set option. Now, by highlighting that data set option, we can see that it automatically creates a query for us. 
And this is exactly the same functionality you get when you drop a list report on or you drop a chart onto your report. What it does is it automatically creates a query for you to populate. But in our case, we want to tie these two together and we want to take advantage of the interactive functionality. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the same query that populates uh, the table that already exists. And that was query one. So now that we have that, I'm going to go and go to the data items for query one. And again, these are the data items that populate the list. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to grab uh, the city. I'm going to grab the longitude. I'm going to grab the latitude and populate those three items. City is not really necessary. My code expects a text field to be passed in, and I have that in there for future use. But what's really important here, of course, is the longitude and latitude. So now that I have that populated, you can see that I set for the custom control, I set a couple of simple properties, pointed to some data, and now by running this, I should get a map that displays all of the retailers in the United States. And there, there we go. We can see now that on our right hand side, we have a map of the US with a bunch of tiny red dots. And each one of those red dots represents one of our retailers in our list report here. And now, because we are in interactive reports, we can take advantage of some of that interactivity that Cognos has built into their reports. And specifically for this example, I'm going to use the filtering capability. So simply by selecting a field and on my list report, I can filter this to include only California. And then by doing so, I not only filter my list, but I also filter my map. And I'm only displaying the fields, uh, I'm sorry, only displaying the retailers that exist in California. And I can take that down another level here by including only Los Angeles. And then there we can see that we, we map only the retailers located in the Los Angeles area. And then finally, we can go down even further and filter by a single store or a single retailer. And this one happens to be on Century Boulevard here. And we zoom in automatically all the way down to that one individual location. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove all the filters. And that is basically it for this first sample. So this first example, I simply took a list of stores and plotted them out onto the map. Now I'm going to give you an example of one that's just a slightly bit more advanced, but still basically the same principle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to welcome here, back to my content, my template. And as we can see, we have the exact same template on the screen here. Same exact list report, same exact format. So once again, I'm going to jump into page design, go to my control, my toolbox, pick custom control, drop that onto the screen. Now that leave that highlighted, check out its properties, and then add the path to my JavaScript code. Now this one is in the same location, but with a slightly different name. Yes. So again, as you can see, uh, I'm simply in this model path, just pointing to the JavaScript code that I'm going to use to populate this custom control. I hit OK and I'm bringing it up. Uh, I'm going to leave the other properties exactly the same as the last time, and I'm going to set the height and width once more. Again, the height I'm going to set to 700, and I'm going to set the width to 1250. It'll give us a nice big map on the screen there. Okay. And then I'm going to add my data. Once again, I want to make sure that I'm sharing the same query as the list report, just to make sure that everything ties together. Go back to our data items. And once again, I'm going to bring in the city name, the longitude, and the latitude. 
Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and simply run the report. Now as this runs, we can see that it looks very similar to the previous report. The only real difference we see here is that on the map itself, our dots or our points are a different color. And on the list report, the JavaScript code added another column for us, and that is to help us, uh, and that is for, to help us um, interact with the map itself. So one, a couple of the advanced features that I've added over the previous version is that now when I highlight individual rows on the list report, the points on the map become highlighted as well. You can see as I move over one, that's Alaska and Juneau, that's highlighted. I can go down here to Phoenix, Arizona. I have that highlighted and Fayetteville. Now, another cool feature that I added in this, in this advanced copy is now because I have these icons here, I can click on them and it'll take me directly to that point. So whereas before in the previous example, I had needed to filter all the way down to get to the individual retail location. Now simply by clicking this icon, the map automatically zooms in to that particular location. And in addition, I have added a pop-up tooltip to the, to the point. Now right now it doesn't have any real information except for the latitude and longitude, but that now gives us a nice place to add any kind of additional information. Um, if this is a data report or an analytic report, we can have inf inf information as such as sales, or we can even embed a chart into that tooltip. And then we can see that we can take that and we can, as we click around, the entire map will move and zoom into the new location. There we went from Arizona to Alaska, and then we can go back down uh, here to California, down into Berkeley, and it zooms right in. And we st and we are still in an in an interactive report, so we can take this report and filter down to an individual state. So I'm going to include California there, and it takes us right down to California. And then once again in California, we can zoom in to individual locations and hop back and forth. Now we do have a reset here and this reset is going to take us up to our filtered level. So if we click on the reset, it's going to zoom out to California because California was the last um, zoom that we had on the map itself. So if we were to go down to Los Angeles and we were to filter on Los Angeles, we see all of our points for our retail locations in, in Los Angeles. And then once again, I can go down to our Century Boulevard's our retail location, zoom right into that, uh, and then bounce around to the different uh, Los Angeles locations. And then finally, hit the reset, take us back up to our last zoom or our last filtered level. And then finally, we can take this off, remove all of our filters, takes us back to our full map. And then once again, if I were to uh, zoom into a specific location, like this, this case, Phoenix, I can click on the reset, which will zoom all the way out and take us back to the full map of the United States and show us all of our retail locations. And that is basically all the demo I have for you today. So in conclusion here, I just want to point out a couple of things here. Even though what I showed you is very cool, uh, we really barely scratch the surface of what we can do with the Mapbox API and, of course, with custom controls. And then also, because we are using custom controls and creating this functionality ourselves, we are not tied to the Mapbox API. If you're interested in mapping APIs, we can use other ones like Google, OpenStreetMaps, Leaflet, and even Bing. And then finally, as I mentioned before, none of this is, is a secret. It's, it's created using information, examples, and code that's publicly available. And you can use those and look at them to get you started. Uh, on the screen here are a couple of links. One, again, of course, was to that analytics community on IBM. And the other one is to the mapbox.com uh, examples. 
Now, that being said, I, I do have to say that you do need to have some JavaScript experience in order to create this. So if this is something that you're interested in and you don't have the capability of creating yourself, or if you happen to get stuck and you need some help, feel free to give me a call and I'm more than happy uh, to have a conversation with you on how I can help uh, push this forward to you. And then finally, if you did like this video, then be sure to subscribe to this channel. Uh, this is the first video I am doing on Cognos Analytics, but there will certainly be many more to come. And if you're interested, I'd like to keep you posted on that. That's it, and thank you very much.